So now I just wanted to show you a couple of uh, options for free software that can be used for time series or other econometrics. <coughs> the, uh, I like to use the freeware because a lot of times uh, software like eViews or uh, others, Stata might have a, a student version that's either like $50 or maybe it's even free, but it's kind of limited in terms of what it can do. And if you want to work in the professional world, you want something that you have the full access to. A lot of places don't pay for that. So. I'm going to show you R, which is probably the best free software to use, but I'm also going to show you Gretel, which is a, an alternative maybe to, to get started on uh, playing around with some of these ideas that we're learning in class. So I'll start with R. Um, you can Google, and I'm assuming you know how to Google stuff and download stuff yourself and install, and you're not worried about some virus taking over your computer. You can just do it and allow it through, so I'm not showing every step. Um, when I Google just R download, and you go to the R pro project, and uh, this site shows you kind of how to get started. Um, what you can do is uh, you can find your version. Um, the latest is uh, it says here 3.5.2. Um, it depends on your uh, your computer whether it's 32 or 64 bit, but usually I use 64. Um, you can go and you can see uh, the different downloads you can get. If you're not familiar with this, a lot of times they actually do have a, uh, a free download uh, that can be done uh, through Windows. So I'm going to click here. Um, different places you can go. Um, and right here, I so I kind of clicked on the closest, and it might have gone through, you know, just the top of the list. But download R for Windows, um, and then you can uh, download it from here. So you can install right here. You just click through, and it says download. I'm not going to do it. Uh, maybe I'll click on it to see what happens. But I've already got it installed. So what I'm showing is kind of like how to kind of navigate your way through. Um, you can see it's it's downloading down here, but I'm kind of going to skip that. So. Um, because I do not need to reinstall it. But once it's there, you install it and go from there. Now, um, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to leave our studio over here, which is next. But um, if you have, uh, this is kind of where we're going with our studio, but let me just show you regular R. So uh, here is, uh, I've got a slightly older version of R here. This is not what you're going to wor work with them. Uh, myself and others, you know, the first time you think you're going to learn R, you think of R. Um, this software could be possible to use. Uh, you can type, you can... Um, I used to save my old uh, scripts in a Word document and paste them in. You can literally work with this. I'm going to type in 2 plus 2, and we know the answer. It'll give it back. However, this is much uh, much more basic than what we're going to work with. But this is what R looks like. There's absolutely no uh, drop-down menus, nothing to work with uh, that has anything to do with any statistical tools. All right. So I will uh, kind of skip from there, and I will go on to R Studio. Now, I, first, if you want to download it, you can obviously Google our studio download, which is the best way to get there. Um, and here it gives you the options. Now, we're, we're pretty much clear that we're going to take the free option, but if you look, you could pay as much as $30,000 per year. Um, it does not give you as much. Um, R now has kind of moved towards some other software uh, models where they have uh, support. It's not completely free and user driven. But you can uh, get everything you want done with our studio from here. This gives you uh, probably a Windows 8 or 7, and you can go from here and download it. And it's going to download. You know how to run an executable file, so I'm going to skip that too. Um, once we have that, we are in our studio, and I have a, a different video showing how to work with that time series data. But you can also do 2 plus 2 and get 4, it's the same answer. Where it gets more useful is, is as I showed before, you can write scripts. Uh, you can open up a script file and you can type your code here, it'll preview you your images here, it'll show you the variables you created over here. So that is what, when we talk about working with R, we're working in R Studio. Um, and and uh, it's our studio is not the software itself. It's not uh, you know computational package. It's simply a, a graphical user interface where you can work with R much more easily. So uh, that's that's what we're going to work with using R and R Studio. But uh, if you're familiar with how to download, uh, those are the sites to go to. Um, and then you just simply execute the file and let it go onto your your desktop or your laptop or however you work. I'm not too familiar with Mac stuff, so if you have a Mac that it gives you issues, then good luck. But for the most part economists work with PCs and, and because we do a lot of the stuff that PCs work best on. So we got R, we got R Studio. Let me show you one other this is free and I like it. It's called Gretel. Um, new regression and econometrics and time series library. This one has actually has a lot of cool stuff for just getting started. So you can download from here. Um, has all the installers down here for Windows and Mac. Um, 
and so that's the site at sourceforge.net. Um, so one thing that I use uh, here that I'm not going to do right now is this X12 Arima or X13. This is good for deseasonalizing data. So the one little extra package that I download is, is for um, deseasonalizing data. Um, it also has, um, sometimes they've used this introduction to econometrics for, for Economics 318, so it's actually got the sets for it, um, as well as some different uh, textbooks. It's got the data already installed. Um, but I don't really use this too much anymore. In the past, I, I liked some of the things it could do, but if you're a student and you're getting started, you want something free that does good things, um, I really suggest using Gretel, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, now, um, here, uh, it's completely blank. A lot of these things are grayed out because you don't have any data. Um, some things it's got that you can do, you can actually open things in R, but I'm going to open data. Now, a lot of software, including eViews and Stata and a lot of software that you can get licenses for, will have a way to open um, external data. So I usually have a CSV file, right? So I will go to here, and, and then I'm opening something, and like I said, I use something that you can't see here because it's got its own native file name. So a lot of software will save the end product as its own file, um, but to open it you've got to open sometimes what's called a foreign data. Now I use CSV, so I'm going to open up all the CSV I can and, and it shows my folders, but it's got my one data set that I've been working with with my oil prices. Now to show here it's got some of the information and it's guessing, it says probably monthly data, it's guessing as to what my data are and it's correct. Um, so sometimes you can't read it at all, it just views it like a, a, a data file, but here it's guessing that it is monthly based on the fact that it has a 1980-11, you know, so it's correct, so it's running it as a time series. If it asks you when you're opening something in software, you just tell it, yes, it's a time series. Sometimes you might have to add the first part of the date. So here they are. So here's my CPI and my oil price data. And I, you can open it up, and you can see that this is my CPI. And I mentioned the base year was uh, something. Well, it's the old school 1982 to 1984 average. So it's the old uh, CPI base. And I've got my oil prices as well. So what I'm going to do is I can take these and I will, so notice I'm just right clicking time series plot. I'm going to do it on a single graph. And here I've got CPI and price of WTI. Now this is still red and blue. You don't have to go in and change the colors and uh, that's something that I haven't really spent a whole lot of time on. But you can also save as this file and you can save it in monochrome, meaning you can save it as one color that would do it in black and white. So that's what I would recommend right now. But look, I didn't have to do any columns. I didn't have to change anything. It simply gives me dates in five-year intervals, and it gives me uh, both variables on one graph. Now, what I could do is I could create a new uh, data. So um, I can add, right? And it, also, it gives me options that we can also do in Excel. We can do logs, squares, lags. We talk about lag variables, differences for time series, log differences, which are percentage changes, as well as percentage changes themselves. Um, you can make an index. You can do all sorts of things. What I am going to do is um, I could take, let me look at uh, percentage changes of CPI. So I'm going to click off of this and just do CPI. It will, and the percentage of percentage change in CPI is the inflation rate. So I'm going to call it INF. And it's monthly. And I'm going to do year over year, which is a choice. We're just going to do January over January and, and, and so forth. So now I've got my inflation rate, and this is the formula. right? So the way it's written is 100 times what we have. The original value over the 12 lag value and then you have to do minus one. And so here's the inflation rate. So if I do the time series plot here, this is US inflation over time, right? It's in red, we have to change the colors, but I'm not gonna do that now. So that was in Gretel. Now, one more thing is if I were to do these, t if I'm gonna do log changes here, I'm gonna do a correlation between the two. So I'm going to add a new variable and I'm gonna do percentage changes of selected variables. I call it, um, PCH PWTI. All right, and the same thing, it's these year on year here. All right, and I've got these two now. If I were to look at this, now I can start to do some things. Um, I can make what I want to do here is a correlation. All right, um, but first let me show you the summary stats. All right, and then I've got, um, let's just see what they got. 
All right, and it gives me mean and median, standard deviation, maximum. All right, I can pick which one I want. It also gives me the third and fourth moments with skewness and kurtosis. All right, and then what I said I wanted to do was to view the uh, correlation matrix. All right, and I've got these two, which is exactly what I want, and it will give me the correlation of point a uh, zero point two six nine. All right, so I'm using the software to do the same things that I'm showing elsewhere in Excel and in R. Um, this, the advantage is, one, it's free. Two, it's user-friendly. We've got the drop-down menu. I really do suggest if you're learning econometrics or time series analysis or any kind of data analysis, you take some data and you just play around. You make logs, you make legs, you see what they do. Um, you can do an OLS or a regression analysis. You could do some of the stuff like a REMA analysis. Um, as all the things you might want to do, because underneath a really powerful computing program is running, but this is kind of a free user-friendly software, right? So uh, what I showed here, right, I showed how to do R in our studio, which I'm going to do a lot more with, um, both in class and online, but also I showed you how to get uh, something in between, a, a free user-friendly drop-down menu-based time series program. So uh, when you're playing around or you're interested in learning, I think this is great to work with. It's also good if you want to do some basic analysis, but in terms of uh, the things that you'd put on your resume or you want to get a job hired uh, doing or telling people you know, definitely R is the best. Some people prefer you know, Julia, Python, all these other programs. Personally, I think you're going to want to invest in one software that you use and get good at. Um, it used to be that that software was SaaS. Uh, however, I think now the, the free aspect and the fact that it's widely adopted makes R more useful, especially if you're an undergraduate student. Um, just starting out learning software, it's best to get really good at one widely used free software. So Gretel's good, but Gretel isn't something you put on your resume. I would say uh, learn R and, and use some of the uh, of resources available to get good at it and practice, and then just keep working with it until you, you know what you're doing. So from, from here on, I'll, I'll talk mostly about R. But I do think Gretel is good as you're learning.